The early 20th century was a time of discovery and great excitement in the field of archaeology. From 1900 to 1930, a vast wealth of sites and artifacts, once considered lost to the world, were rediscovered and studied. In the Mediterranean, the Hittite and Minoan civilizations were just being rediscovered and researched. In Egypt, British archaeologists were exploring places like the Valley of the Kings, and in South America, the search for pre-Columbian ruins captivated the academic community. It is here, among the dense jungles of the Amazon, that the man we'll be discussing today conducted his work. This is the story of the British archaeologist and cartographer Percy Fawcett, and the expedition which would see him mysteriously vanish, never to be seen again. I'm the Lunar Librarian, and in my first video that isn't about a true crime case, I'll be recounting Percy Fawcett's life, his theories of a hidden city deep in the Amazon, and his ill-fated expedition to try and uncover it. Percy Harrison Fawcett was born on the 18th of August, 1867. He was the son of Edward Boyd Fawcett and Myra Elizabeth. Edward and Myra had met in India while Edward was serving in the 34th Cumberland Regiment of the British Army. The couple remained in India until 1866, when they moved to Brighton, England, in anticipation of their first child, Percy's older brother Douglas Fawcett. Prior to his time in the military, Edward had been educated at both Brighton and Trinity College, where he had become a fellow in the Royal Geographical Society. Edward also had a reputation for heavy drinking and philandering, and although both himself and his wife were born wealthy, Edward's vices rapidly squandered both family fortunes. Despite their sometimes tumultuous financial situation, Percy's parents were determined to ensure that both he and his brother had a good education. Percy received an early education at Newton Abbott Proprietary College alongside his older brother Douglas. While in school, both Douglas and Percy developed very adventurous and outgoing personalities. After preparatory school, Percy went on to attend the Royal Military Academy at Woolwich. On January 24, 1886, Percy was commissioned as a lieutenant in the Royal Artillery. That same year, he met his future wife, Nina Patterson, who he married in 1901. In 1896, Percy was made the adjutant of the 1st Cornwall Artillery Volunteers, where he was promoted to captain on June 15, 1897. Percy served with the 1st Cornwall Artillery across the globe. He was stationed in Hong Kong, Malta, and Sri Lanka during his time with the regiment. However, in 1901, Percy left the artillery and joined the Royal Geographical Society to study map making. Percy worked with the British Secret Service in North Africa while learning surveying and map making, and in 1903 was reassigned to the War Office at Spike Island in Ireland. Percy served at Spike Island from 1903 to 1906. Here, he befriended authors Henry Ryder Haggard and Arthur Conan Doyle. In fact, Fawcett's later expeditions in the Amazon are sometimes credited as the inspiration for Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World, although this is unconfirmed. It was here on Spike Island where both of Percy's sons, Jack and Brian Fawcett, were born. On May 2nd, 1906, after three years in Ireland, Percy Fawcett was reassigned again to South America, a posting which would have an apparently profound effect on him. In 1906, the Royal Geographical Society was contacted to help map the Amazon jungle along the border of Brazil and Bolivia. Maps documenting the border were unclear and inconsistent. However, neither the Brazilian nor Bolivian government trusted the other to chart the region. The RGS was contacted to act as an unbiased third party, one which could be trusted to chart the area 
without being influenced by national interests on either side. Percy Fawcett was chosen as the one to complete this task. This first expedition into the Amazon sparked Percy's intense fascination with the jungle. Percy returned again to the Amazon in 1908 in order to chart the source of the Rio Verde River. In 1910, Percy retired from the military in order to pursue map-making full-time. After the birth of his daughter Joan in the same year, Percy again traveled to the Amazon to chart the source of the Heath River. In 1911, Percy once again traveled into the Amazon in order to chart the jungle, this time bringing his longtime friend Henry Coston, who would become a regular companion of his. It was during this expedition that Percy began to develop his theory of an ancient lost city hidden somewhere in the Amazon jungle. Percy believed this city once existed as the capital of an unknown civilization, one which had fallen before the arrival of the Portuguese. This civilization, as Percy understood it, had once ruled over the tribes of the Amazon jungle from this lost city located somewhere in the Mato Grosso region of Brazil. In absence of any knowledge of this city, Percy named it Zed. While this theory may sound far-fetched to many today, during Percy's time it was not necessarily impossible. Much of the Amazon jungle had not yet been charted or explored. The rainforest is incredibly dense, and with so much unexplored ground, the idea of a lost city, or at least the ruins of one, wasn't particularly ridiculous. Indeed, Machu Picchu had been discovered in the same year, making the idea that another lost city was hiding in the Amazon seem like a real possibility in 1911. But Percy's theory wasn't just based on hope and speculation. He had more concrete evidence. Manuscript 512 is a ten-page manuscript written by unknown Bandariantes sometime in 1753. For those who don't know, a Bandariante is essentially the Portuguese equivalent of a conquistador. This group of unknown Bandariantes described the ruins of a lost city they had encountered in their travels, including statues, the remains of buildings, and a temple with hieroglyphs. The origins and accuracy of this manuscript are questionable today. However, Percy believed it wholeheartedly. To Percy, Zed and the city described in Manuscript 512 were one and the same. Emboldened by this evidence, Percy began making plans to search for Zed. By 1914, Percy had drafted plans and was preparing for his next expedition into the Amazon. However, these plans were derailed by the outbreak of the First World War. Despite the fact that he had retired from the military four years prior, and that he was nearly 50 years old, Percy was still a military man and a patriot, and he felt compelled to serve. At the outbreak of the war, he volunteered to re-enlist in the artillery. Given his prior experience, Percy was given command of an artillery company in Flanders, where he served with distinction. He received a Distinguished Service Order in 1917, and was promoted to lieutenant colonel on March 1, 1918. After the war, Percy again focused his attention on the search for Zed. In 1920, he made his first attempt to find the city, but was forced to turn back after suffering a severe fever. This failure did not deter Percy. Instead, he returned to England, seeking financiers for his next expedition. Eventually, Percy's theories gained traction with a London-based group of anonymous investors known collectively as the Glove. With their funding, Percy began preparing for what would prove to be his final journey into the Amazon. With funding from the Glove and a new plan to search for Zed along the upper Zingu River, Percy set out for Brazil one final time in 1924. He was accompanied by his eldest son, Jack, as well as Jack's longtime friend, Raleigh Rimmel. Curiously, before he left, Percy left instructions stating that no expeditions should be sent to find them 
if they were to go missing. What makes this interesting is that Percy had never left these kinds of instructions before, even though he had ventured into far more dangerous regions. Despite any suspicions his parting instructions may have raised, Percy and his son departed from London and traveled to Cuiaba, Brazil, where they planned to buy supplies and begin their search. The trio arrived in Cuiaba sometime in 1925, where they remained for a few months in order to prepare. While in Brazil, the group hired two Brazilian laborers to assist them in their expedition, and purchased horses, donkeys, and even two dogs for the journey. On April 20th, 1925, the group departed from Cuiaba into the Amazon rainforest. Then, on the 29th of May, Percy sent one of the laborers he had hired back to Cuiaba in order to deliver a letter which would prove to be his final correspondence with the world. In this letter, addressed to his wife, Percy details how the group was at Dead Horse Camp and was approaching uncharted territory. His plan was to allow the laborers he had hired to return to Cuiaba, while himself, Jack, and Raleigh ventured further into the rainforest. In this letter, Percy seemed optimistic as to the outcome of their expedition. Sometime after this letter was sent, Percy, Jack, and Raleigh would disappear into the Amazon, never to be seen or heard from again. To this day, what exactly happened to Percy Fawcett and his expedition remains a mystery. In absence of any concrete evidence, numerous theories have been developed since his disappearance in an attempt to provide some kind of explanation. In 1927, American explorer George Miller Dyett claimed that he had uncovered evidence which proved Fawcett had been killed by the Alokoi tribe. This story, however, was regarded as dubious even at the time. Whatever evidence Dyett found, he never shared it with the public, casting doubt on his story. Furthermore, Henry Coston, Percy's longtime friend and traveling companion, expressed serious doubt that Percy would be killed by any of the indigenous tribes in the region. While many explorers at the time were prejudiced against indigenous people, even to the point of outright hostility, Percy was far more open-minded than many of his colleagues. According to Henry, and indeed most people who traveled with him, Percy was respectful and courteous towards the native people, and took great care to avoid conflict with them. It is therefore unlikely Percy would have been killed by any indigenous tribe in the Mato Grosso region. However, this would not be the last time indigenous Brazilians were blamed for Fawcett's disappearance. In 1951, Orlando Villas Boas claimed to have discovered the skeletal remains of Percy Fawcett. According to Villas Boas, Fawcett was killed by the Calapalo tribe. He claimed that three Kalapalo men had confessed to killing the Fawcett expedition and disposing of their remains in the jungle. However, when interviewed, Vajuvi, an elder of the Kalapalo, denied that his tribe had anything to do with the disappearance. Additionally, Brian Fawcett, Percy's youngest son, refused to accept this explanation. These factors would call into question the legitimacy of the bones and prompt a forensic examination of the skeleton which Villas Boas had discovered. This investigation concluded that the bones were not, in fact, Percy Fawcett's remains. This makes the Kalapalo explanation also extremely unlikely. In 1979, Percy Fawcett's signet ring was discovered in a pawn shop. This has led to speculation that the expedition was killed by bandits who were hiding out in Mato Grosso. This is plausible, as the Amazon was known to harbor criminals and bandits on the run from the law. The jungle was large, poorly mapped, and had no law enforcement present, so it's entirely possible that Percy was unfortunate enough to run into bandits while on his expedition. According to this theory, Percy, Jack, and Raleigh were murdered, their possessions were stolen and then sold, and their remains were disposed of somewhere along the upper Zingu River. While plausible, this theory is based entirely on Percy's signet ring 
and remains purely conjecture. It is not known if the ring was even in Percy's possession when he disappeared, or if he himself had sold it earlier in his expedition to buy supplies. Another theory argues that Percy Fawcett did not actually die at all, but rather disappeared intentionally in order to establish a religious commune based on the principles of theosophy. For those unaware, theosophy is an esoteric religious movement which originated in New York in the late 19th century. The movement blends Neoplatonic and classical European philosophy with Buddhism and Hinduism. Percy's brother Douglas was a devoted theosophist, meaning Percy would have had at least some contact with the movement throughout his life. Furthermore, Percy's instructions that no one should come looking for him if he were to disappear have come to be suspicious in hindsight. Percy hadn't left these kinds of instructions before, even though his previous expeditions had all either been equally or more dangerous than this one. It's possible Percy knew beforehand that he was going to disappear and didn't want anyone following him. Finally, there remains the possibility that nature claimed the lives of the Fawcett expedition. Between dangerous wildlife, disease, and dehydration, any number of natural hazards could have killed the group. Even for a man as experienced as Percy, the Amazon is an unforgiving place, one in which even a small mistake can cost you your life. With no definitive evidence for any theory, the disappearance of Percy Fawcett remains a mystery to this day. But what do you think? If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I make content focusing on historical mysteries and true crime, so if that sounds interesting, consider sticking around. Until next time, I've been the Lunar Librarian. Thank you and goodbye.